Hello. A key component to becoming a strong lighting artist is having a very deep understanding of all the lighting tools at your disposal. So to that end, uh, today we're going to discuss all the lighting tools that are ship with LightWeb 9.6 and those lighting tools will include the point light, the spot, the distant light, the linear light, dome light, area light, spherical light, photometric light, global illumination, geometry lights, and ambient light. So I'm just going to go to my perspective view so we can see what the light position is in relation to the guy. So it's a little bit above and to the right. So over here somewhere in that prime window. So we just fire up, low, I'll just enlarge, embiggen the F prime window a little bit so we can see where it is. We want to look at the specific properties of the, my lighting is usually aesthetic. Um, I do, however, use the Kelvin color temperature scale a lot. Kelvin covers uh, all, all the incandescent light, natural light colors. Uh, for example, a household light bulb is going to be around 3000 Kelvin, so around that color. Uh, sunlight is going to be around 5500, if I remember correctly, or 6000 or something like that, so pretty close to white. And then you get into your sky colors, and sky is typically 10 to 20,000 Kelvin. So there's a nice skylight color. Now we are starting to see some real normal light with physical fall off happening in here. So if we have a small light that's one centimeter across, we need a million percent light intensity just to get it to read well. Now here's what's really great about this. Watch what happens to the light as I drop it towards the floor. It's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and at a certain point it just starts clipping. And what clipping means is that this area down here inside here is becoming so overexposed that all the pixels uh, can only go as high as RGB 255, 255, 255, which is white. That's all this monitor will display. The actual uh, illumination, the actual exposure is much higher than what this monitor can, it can display. So it, it, it clips. All the pixels just stop at white. Uh, the great thing is uh, Lightwave's HDR render will pre preserve all this data if you render out in a floating point file format like OpenEXR, which is probably the most popular. And then you can re-expose this afterwards if you want to bring this back in. But, you know, real photographs, real photographic quality imagery has areas of overexposure in it. So this makes this light behave in a really, really natural way. Even though it's still a point light with only sharp shadows, which are unrealistic, at least our light illumination values are feeling a lot more realistic than if I, for example, turn off my fall off and set my light back to 100%. So there it is. We're actually we're actually projecting uh, that image. You know, th there's a lot of really great uses for this other than something like a stained glass window if you're doing a film projection. You know, you're trying to mimic a film projector. You could put an image sequence in there and project that instead. Uh, you can, uh, you could do water caustics. You could take a bunch of the procedurals, make an image sequence out of a bunch of moving procedurals, and then project that as light caustics. There's just tons and tons of possible different uses for this uh, this trick. Uh, one of the nicest looking, uh, probably my aesthetically favorite. Uh, aspect of the projection image is turning on some volumetric lighting. Put an image in, turn volumetric lighting on with its default options, render it out, and here's what we get. So there you have it. Pretty nice for default settings if you ask me. In my opinion, there's a far better use for the dome light, and that is if you want a distant light, but you want it to have natural looking shadows. You see, the dome light has this most awesome setting, angle. And what happens is, if you decrease that angle, this shadow, you can see, just barely see the really soft shadow in here, the shadow is going to sharpen up. 
So I've let the render resolve a little bit and you can see using just two dome lights you can get a pretty nice looking uh, render for a uh, sunny day. Although I prefer to use real radiosity with multiple bounces. Um, I've used this on many many occasions and it's really saved on the rendering times and often it looks so close to just as good that it makes absolutely no difference. Uh, remember that you can also change the color of the ambient light. So you can make it uh, nice deep, well that's too blue, nice skyish blue. So you can get some nice blue fill happening in there if you need to.